Hello friends, welcome to today's video. I'm Jeanette with Vivo Vintage Designs. Today I wanted to share a technique that I've used in the past with acrylic paint and a glue gun. Only today we're going to do it with alcohol ink. Now the first mistake I did was to prime my canvas. I used semi-gloss paint, interior paint, because I didn't have any kills too. And this works really great if you're just blowing out a flower. But as you saw there, the glue just peeled right off. So I decided to try it on an unprimed canvas. So I have a tiny little canvas here. And for the sake of time, I decided to keep this very simple and just show you the basics. And of course, you can get as creative as you like once you have the, um, the technique down. So I decided to create just the shape of a leaf. Again, keeping it very simple. And because the canvas is not primed, the glue adhered very well. Now in the past, when I did this with acrylic, I painted the canvas first with the acrylic and then I applied the glue. So the glue stuck to the acrylic paint, but it peels right off of the semi-gloss paint. And I'm not sure whether it would stick to the Kills 2 primer or not. But I ran out of that a while ago and I've been using the semi-gloss paint which seals the canvas beautifully if you want to blow out a flower using your compressor. Now the most annoying part of this technique is removing the glue strings. And you can see I was using a kneadable eraser to lift them and then using a razor to cut them off. And the uh, kneadable eraser works well to remove them from the canvas and to lift them, then you can pull them off but it's really time consuming. There's got to be a better way. If you know an easier way to remove the glue strings, please let me know in the comments because this is a technique that I wanted to share with you for quite a while, but I remember how annoyed I get at removing these strings. So you can see I'm just using a razor here and lifting and trying not to poke through the canvas with the razor. I think the biggest problem is that I'm not very patient. I want to get right to the painting. And this really slows me down. <laughs> All right, so I decided to use my dry palette because the ink will be absorbed by the canvas. So I figured using a dry palette would be easier. So I'm using the color Limeade to fill in the spaces in between the lines that I've created with the glue. And even though the canvas is absorbing the ink, this was really easy to do. I'm definitely going to try this technique again, but uh, using a different image, maybe something a little bit more detailed and I'll be a little bit more creative. I've even considered doing it on cradle board so then I can resin over it. I have so many ideas. I just wish I had the time to make them all happen. Now here I've mixed a darker shade of green using a botanical, a little purple, and a little bit of blue just to deepen the color. And I applied it to the center vein and the bottom of the veins that go outward. However, it was because it didn't blend very well, I didn't like the way it looked. So later on, once I have finished applying the deeper color, I went back with a little bit of the limeade or just some alcohol on my brush and I blended it out a little bit more and it looked much better. So you can see here, I'm just using the brush with a little bit of alcohol and occasionally I'll pick up a little bit more of the limeade and I'm blending that color in, which was surprisingly easy. I thought that because the canvas will absorb the ink that I wouldn't be able to move it once it was applied, 
but it was very simple to do, very easy. I've never tried alcohol ink on an unprimed canvas, and I was surprised to see how easy it was to paint on the canvas with the ink. So now I'm just going over and filling in any spaces that where I can see the canvas. And now I'm using a larger brush. And you can see, even, even if you don't have a dry palette, you can just pour the ink on a non-porous surface and use a brush. You can use a lid from yogurt or any plastic lid that you may have, or um, any non-porous surface will do. You can see I'm painting the side of the canvas too. I think that just makes it look a little bit neater and a little bit more finished. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video because as usual, once I was finished with the video, I looked at the painting and I thought it needed something more. So I did go back and add more glue and um, you'll see at the end of the video what I ended up with. So now um, I don't like the background being so flat. So I'm taking my mini mister and I'm spraying a little bit of alcohol to give me a textured finish on the background and I really do like the way that turned out. And you can see that I was using a paper towel to cover up the leaf because I did not want that texture on the leaf, just the background. And now I'm drying the background and the areas where I think I need another little spritz. I'm just going to add a little bit more alcohol with the mini mister. And I really like the mini mister and I've mentioned this in previous videos because it gives, it sprays a really fine mist and it gives you this really nice textured finish. Now, if you're working on a larger surface, you can use a regular spray bottle and get the same effect, but in larger size droplets, I guess. Now I'm using my liquid chrome markers. I have these in gold and silver, and these are my favorite metallic markers because it really does look like a, like a mirror. It gives you a mirror finish. And I usually would use the Posca pens, but the finish is not the same. I still love my Posca pens, but for a metallic finish, I really love these markers. And the pack comes in, um, it's a pack of three, and it comes in fine, medium, and large nibs. So you have a nice variety to choose from. And when I first started doing this, I was using the one with the medium nib, but that was taking too long. And I was trying to make sure that I even got the sides of the glue. I decided to switch to the larger one because again, I'm not patient and I found this much easier. I was very careful not to get the gold ink on the canvas and it works very easily. You just take your time and run it across the glue. And then you can use a smaller nib to go uh, around the edges. You want to cover up as much of the glue as you can. I think it just gives it a more finished look. Now this is a really fun technique. Again, you can get as creative with this and use whatever image you like. And if you do, I would love to see what you come up with. So be sure to share it with me on our Facebook group, Vivo Vintage Design Tutorials, where you can post your version of any tutorial or technique used on this, learned on this channel. We have a great group of members that are incredibly talented and so very supportive. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any upcoming tutorials, and be sure to give this video a like. It's a nice way to show your support, and I really appreciate it. Check out the description box for links to the products used, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!